All right, I am going to begin sewing in the signatures. So we have our two full signatures here, and what I do is remove all the ephemera and sew it into our base. And as you can see, I ended up using fabric on the inside. I just didn't want to have the gap between the papers um, that would show, you know, the difference between where the outside fabric left off and then there was a, a little gap between the paper. You can paint that, you can paint that area. And I've done that several times, but this time I just chose to use fabric. And because I had this very soft pink with roses on it, it was perfect. At least I feel that it's perfect. And my plan is to make some pockets after I've um, sewn in the signatures on the sides here. And then I will tuck in some of these heavily embellished tags right there. And probably something else. I've actually um, got some ballet books and the paper was too thick to use as actual pages in my signatures, but I still would like to include them because they have beautiful illustrations in them. So I might tuck some in each um, side pocket of the inside covers. So that's my thinking with that. So I'm gonna put these aside. And what I've done is I have made my template for my spine. So I take the width, whatever it is, this particular journal is two and a half inches. And I make sure that it will fit inside the spine without bending or warping. Then I find my center of the, um, of the width. And then I just work out how I want, how far apart I want the signatures to fall. I tend to like a bigger space in between. That way each signature falls to its side and is much easier to write in if you're going to indeed use it for journaling. So what I've done is I just made two lines. I'm going to use five stitch um, pamphlet stitch for this project, which I usually do. So I measure off the center and then I do an inch and a half and three inches, inch and a half, three inches. Do a little red felt pen mark and I have this little foam cushion piece. And what I'm gonna do is grab some of my clips And then I just make sure I've got the top of the inside of the journal right top on this. And clip one there. This particular um, book is eight and a half inches tall, which most of them are. I do most of my covers at eight and a half inches. Some are shorter, not very many are longer. So eight and a half is a pretty safe bet. And then what I do is I look at it from this angle. I need to move that over a little ticky-poo here. My stitching um, of the covers, it went pretty well. It was very hard on my machine. And these little bumps under here are all beads. So, um, yeah, it's a little lumpy. Can't be helped. Still being moved over a tick. Okay. All right. And then I keep my top. And what I do is I pre-pierce uh, the holes. So I usually start in the middle. It just makes for much easier sewing. Press straight up and down. Don't go off to an angle. Same with when you're sewing it in. 
Make sure your needle is straight up and down. You go off to the side and it's going to get derailed. Okay. So hopefully those will be easy for me to see, which they're kind of not through the silk, but whatever. So then I take this out, this um, template, and put my cover to the side. Now, this is where I try to stay organized, and I learned this from watching a lovely YouTuber, Cheryl from Deli Girl Creations, one of the first ladies I ever watched. And I actually did a journal with me project with her. Her Etsy store or her store is no longer open, but she said she was going to be leaving her YouTube videos up. So if you ever want a really good series to follow along with, I'd highly recommend her as well. So I take the pieces out and what I do is I start stacking them. This is to reduce the bulk and then every time I turn a page, I um, place the ephemera, you know, like change directions. It just helps to keep your little stack neat and tidy and all organized so that when you put it back in again, there's a method. It made sense to me and I've sure found it extremely helpful. I could have done this beforehand to save time and I actually have done this before in another um, video on my channel. I've got the first three videos I ever did were how to sew velvet covers. That was by request and that's how I came about starting a YouTube channel because I don't really sell my journals, you know, maybe occasionally, but I try to make them as gifts for friends and family and I do have a large collection myself. So, um, that's why I started a YouTube channel, was to be able to share what I had learned. And then this next part will be tricky as far as keeping your pages straight. And some of the um, pages, as you know, um, are bulky right in the center. So I'm going to have to be really careful with my where I'm holding the page as I sew it in. Okay, so this is one signature now and it feels like a little flat pancake. <laughs> That's quite a stack that all adds to the height of your journal. So then I put it off to the side and then when I do the second signature, um, I do the same. So I've got two neat little piles. And um, yeah, what I've got here, start in the center, and I always do the back signature first. When you're sewing it in, there's my top. So I'm gonna start with this signature first in the back, and then the other one will come into the front. That's just the way I learned it, and makes sense to me. So you start with the center, and just get a really good grip you know, hold it between your fingers like that. And then what I'm going to do is kind of, sort of, kind of, sort of. Yeah, that's going to just be right between the holes, which is good. We'll just keep it evenly spaced. I mean, these are junk journals, so technically it doesn't have to be perfect, but I try and get it as even, as very even as possible. Sometimes these look really cool if you stagger them, like one a lot lower down. It doesn't always have to be completely in the center. And if this, actually, I think I want to trim that. 
I don't want that lace catching in my seam. And the reason I probably didn't do it sooner was I was waiting for the glue to dry. All right. Yep, I go, Karen. Almost did it upside down. Oh yeah. Okay, we're good. This here, still a little thick. And then I watch when the pages are staggered that it's a pretty equal distance. I don't want to get the top really high, the bottom off kilter, if you know what I mean. But if you have to go one way or another, I would get the bottom straight. Because the bottom is what's going to sit on a shelf perhaps one day. So it wouldn't matter if the top sticks out somewhat, if you're struggling to get it even. Okie dokie. And I also check in here to make sure this is as flush down as possible on both ends. Otherwise, you're not going to get your stitching in the, uh, the fold, like in the crease. You know what I mean? When you pierce your holes, you want to do it one time. It's just paper after all. I gotta change this. That one is just poking up a little bit. There we go. I actually read about a lady, one of the groups that I belong to. I lost a clip. Actually, to prevent her pages from slipping, what she does is she sews it with her machine right, right down that center crease. Well, I don't think I want to do that. But I can understand why. direction. Now we take our spine again and my little foam and I'm going to take the back signature. So it's going to be this back row is going to go down into the valley here. Now the old valley in the mountain terminology. I think my pages initially were eight and one eighth. So this will stick out a little bit, but that's okay. Looks really good to me. And then I'll try to do this so that you can see it. I start in the center and go straight down. So 
So this is just marking your holes. So that you can stitch evenly. And there you go, right along the crease. Exactly what I want. Okay, looking good so far. And then I leave the clips in here. I'm gonna load my thread. I have come to like waxed upholstery thread the best. This is waxed linen thread. It rips for me. It's just, I don't know. I struggle with my hands being strong enough to tie things and um, manipulate them the way I need to, to craft and stuff. But this, I, I really, really like it. So I think four times, two, three, four. Probably way too long. I'd rather have too much than not enough because I like dangles down at the bottom when we're done. And then take a wide um, darning needle, I guess. You don't want it too horrendously fat though because this is gonna go through your page. And if your thread is quite thin, but your needle holes are wide, that's gonna slip around in there too. So, you just bear with me here while I thread my needle. Alrighty. Then I just pull about that much through. And I have my 10 buttons ready. So I'm gonna use five, five down each signature on the outside. And here we go. First one in the middle. Keeping your needle straight. Oh, what I forgot to do was mark. Mark my halfway point, which is going to be about there. Sorry, my hands and my head are all over the place. This is a tricky part. This used to intimidate me the most about journal making, and I would have never even considered doing a video of it because I didn't want anybody to see me make mistakes. But guess what? We all make mistakes and that's how you learn. And then I just go up one side of the holes in the center of the button and down. If there's four, you just need two. If you only have two holes for the button, lucky you. So now you need to go right back through the same hole, but don't catch your wax thread. And then go back through your holes. Okay, hopefully I did it without going through the thread. Good. And then I just pull this up. And, oh, I did. All right. So I ended up having to start again. It was just easier because I'd only just barely started. So pull it to your marker, which is about there. Alrighty. And we've got the top and the top. Let's try this again. There, I can see what would have happened again. There. I believe I've got it. No, 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 no. Okay, that's better. And then get it snug, but your first one doesn't have to be super, super tight. Go down the bottom hole. Keep your, keep your needle as straight as you can. You know, and sometimes I've had pages rip and whatnot, and thank goodness for washi tape or reinforcements or whatever you need to do. It's, it's really, 
tricky sometimes to um, try and repair. There we go. A hole. Once that happens. So now this one is kind of ripping up a little. And that one I make sure I've got nice and tight. Did my two buttons. Now we go for this one. And the tighter it becomes, sorry, I have to go down here to get it in the right spot. Sometimes if I can't find the hole that I pierced, which is happening now. I actually think I forgot. Okay, this will be a first. There, I got it. I just couldn't see it. You just kind of go by the feel of things after you've done this a few times. So this is now our third button on the first signature. Some ladies that I've watched, they just do this so easily. And I will tell you, it's because I'm trying to do a video of it. So many times it, I've done this and it goes so smoothly and then I'm thinking why can't it do that when I'm trying to make a video. Okay now we switch and we go up the top. Do I just flatten the end a tick? And go all the way up here. So far I haven't met any resi resistance, which is a good sign that none of my trim is getting in the way of the stitches. And then down our last hole. And I just sort of give these a little tug to make sure that they're secure and they're not super loose. One thing I'd love to try is using um, beads instead of buttons. Yeah. That's, I'd love to challenge myself and learn new things. I. I love dangly things and bling and lots of um, journal jewelry. Might not be your thing. Okay. Looks good from the outside. And then you can do it a couple of different ways, tying it off. Just make sure they're snug. And then I go through this one just above that other hole. See, didn't make it through. And then this one up this way.
remove these. Got these off Amazon. If anybody's liking them. I had some other clips and clamps, but I guess I had them for so long they started to leave like dirty marks on my page. The, the indentations, those will should ease up after a bit. Okay, and I just double knot it. You could cut these short, you could do whatever you want. I leave them. And there we go. And then what I would do is I would press, go through and press down each page before I return the ephemera back in here. And because I started this, I'm just gonna keep going with it. It just helps to give a more even, see how flat that is for writing? That's amazing. And when I do give a journal as a gift, I always make sure I tell people you can remove all of the ephemera and um, write in your journal and then put it back or use it as cards, you know, gift tags, whatever you want, or just put your favorite ones in. Or you can write on them all, which I like to do. I like to write on all the tags. And then those sometimes are a little bit more personal notes that get tucked into a pocket. So you get the idea of what I'm doing and how this will help your pages to lie flat afterwards. The um, wax upholstery thread that I got, I buy it actually at Hobby Lobby in the upholstery section or the, you know, where they have yarn and all that kind of stuff. Um, I just love it. it. It is a little bit waxier, kind of sticky, but the results are worth it. Okay. So that is the first signature. This I'm gonna have to glue in again somehow. It's wiggle its way out. So now I will take out the ephemera of the first signature. Start from the back. Because when you put it back in, that way you can just start from the front and go down your little pile. I said I really um, was thinking of not showing this part of the process in my video this particular series because I have done it before but that's okay I think it just is a nice um, continuation of the entire process for this journal series Now here's the one that I want to be careful of right there, stitching it in. And this is our first signature, all right? So I'm gonna scoot this over here for a minute. And we're gonna do our process again of starting in the middle. That one's really close to the fold too. But I can't cut it as the stitching is right, right, right there. So it'll just maybe shift a little bit. And then that. I'm gonna have to really be careful. Okay, 
Okay. Feels good. mostly going to be the bottom of that little page that's a concern to me so if the bottom hole is pierced outside of the um, the trim we'll be fine sorry concentrating here again. Now I'm going to pierce the holes in the first signature. So we just flip our card around, make sure the top is at the top of your signature, all going in the right direction. And just put your template into the valley there. And it should extend equal distance on either side. I prefer to do it the um, the height of the uh, total journal when it's completed, not the pages. Otherwise, I don't know. It's just me. Anybody else have to have a flashlight by their desk to see underneath it when you drop stuff? Or is it just me and nobody else wants to admit it? Yeah, well. Okay, just kind of flat me. And, ooh, I want to do my halfway mark. That's just to help keep your strings even. And this is the one, which is the one, yeah, I think that's it. And here we go with signature number two, which is actually the first signature. All right. Wish me luck. Straight down.
that's about there. There we go. And then add my button up and down. I just do them across from each other, the holes. And then back through your original hole. That's if you're wanting to do this button method. Like I said, there's other methods out there that are a lot easier, much quicker. And the reason I do this one is because I like the vintage buttons. I love them. Okay, good. Now for our bottom one. Straight down, straight down. No resistance on that one, good. Good sign. I'm gonna remove this little clip because it's in the way. Okay, now I wanna give it a bit of a tug. Not too much, don't wanna rip your beautiful papers that you worked so hard making. Go up and down. Back through the hole. I find it helps a bit if I pull the thread to one side. There we go. That one came out easy. Because let me tell you, I'm not starting this all over again. Uh uh. Then I just tug on my button a little, gently. There we go. Perfect. And down this hole. Or is this the one that's a tricky one? Button number eight. Two more to go. Switch to the top thread. And up we go. Right down. But 
number nine. Sometimes if I'm using buttons and I don't like the one side, like when I'm using an assortment of vintage buttons, um, I'll just flip it over. Or if there's a stain or a, just something old and weird on it. Yeah, you can flip them over. But certainly if you're using all the same kind as I am in this project, I want them all to look the same, which they do. So far, so good. And the last hole. And you can take your clips out now. Okay. Phew, we did it. Let's check them. Sometimes I find this easier to just thread through with my um, hands rather than with a needle. Just because. Interesting how some tools serve multi-purposes, right? This is to get all the negative bits out of your dies, your die cuts. <laughs> well, I use it as my all. A-W-L. All right, folks. This is it. I'm tying it off. And then I will again press the pages apart. Go wash my hands and put the ephemera back in glue the side pockets on and then I would start to think about what I'm going to do for the journal topper which I already showed you in the last video and yeah I do want to check that now see I just want to show you this looks really good equal quarter of an inch from there and a quarter of an inch from there like I said the most important thing is that is getting the bottom flush so it doesn't hang outside of your journal. There we go. Perfect. We dodged it. I'm happy about that. Okay, so what else do I need to show you? Oh, the cover for the velvet journal. Let's look at that. So this is how it turned out. I did a zigzag stitch, and I don't usually do that on velvet because it crushes the pile a bit. I like to use a straight stitch, but because... I was doing fabric on the inside. I wanted to make sure that the fabric doesn't um, fray as much. So it's a little bit loose, which whatever that happens. I'm going to cover that with these pockets and it will be minimized. So the next time you see these journals, we should be a lot farther along. I'm going to add that I am going on vacation for about 10 days, so I'll see what I can do um, in the next day or two, <laughs> but I probably won't be able to do anything more um, until I come back. So there will be a gap now in the time from what I can post, and I've got these beautiful beads from Sheila. So, so beautiful. Can't wait to see what else I'm going to do. I've got a bunch of 
charms and little pretty dangly things here ready to go. I've got this little ballerina and this little girl. I will add them to my topper in some way or another. So once again, thank you so much for watching. I hope this has been helpful to you and inspirational. Give it a try. I mean, if I can do it, you can do it. That's that's for sure. It's just take your time. And if you have to start again, you start again. It's okay. It's all going to be beautiful when you're finished. Hope you have a great day and we'll see you next time.